Lakers coach J.J. Redick held his introductory press conference this week, used some colorful language when answering a question about dispelling some concerns or misconceptions. Take a listen. It's, it's been a really interesting uh, six weeks or so, um, just in terms of, uh, you know, being part of the engagement farming uh, industry. You know, it's been really interesting. Um, however, I, I, I don't really have a great answer for your uh, question because I, I really don't give a f Like, honestly, I want to coach the Lakers. I want to coach the team. I don't want to dispel anything. Wow, yeah, man. Metal. <laughs> Brew your reaction. <clears throat> you guys know I don't curse. At all. All right? I love it. If we as a society went back to a time where <laughs> cursing wasn't commonplace in our music, in our movies, in our public discourse. Morning there's meeting when Wild has I, I mean, that's really. not true. Right? I always have my but cursing is yeah. commonplace. Mm -hmm. Players do it at championship parades routinely. I know people, and I'm not even taking a shot at LeBron. I know people that left the Cleveland championship parade in 2016 because LeBron was cursing so much, all right? They curse on their podcasts, all right? Our political discourse, they're not cursing, but it's, it's not Sometimes professional anymore. Are. Yeah, yeah and it's not really professional. And the kids are hearing cursing anytime they want in music and everything like that. And so, look, as people might say, well, he's supposed to be a coach. Michael Malone, after they lost game seven, when he was asked about you're up by 20, he cursed. Wasn't that big of a deal. Deion Sanders this year won their games, actually after a win, cursed. Like, I, I, look, again, I, it's not that I condone what he said, but I'm just saying it's all over the place. And now we decide this is the well, one place I think that is going to, we're going to, this is where we're going to expect polite conversation in a press conference with I, a coach. I think that your introductory press conference as the coach, I think, is different than a celebratory drunken parade. Or a why? Or because it's because there's what do you mean why? The I same mean, like, reason the same reason why on the podcast YouTube show I do for my wife's store with my son I dress differently than on this show and use different language because a time and place for certain things. But they do have adults, shows like ours I, where people don't they, wear suits, they, no, right? And but they, they don't have the shows like ours on TV. <clears throat> well, I guess there might they be do. one where they're regularly dropping f bombs because. It's just kind of known what you're supposed to do in, in certain time and place. But I have a kind of different take on this, but I would like to hear Wild. Okay, so my take is similar to yours that I think there's too much cursing. But I, and my reaction is to the reaction, which I've kind of put into two different groups. Group over here, no big deal. Not like you're saying it's not a big deal, but like it's commonplace, get used to it, like, ah, yeah. it's fine. Over here, I'm kind of like the pearl clutchers, like heavens to Betsy. I'm over here where I don't think we should be cursing, or J.J. Reddick should be cursing, because it should be saved for something special. And I said it's a little, a little bit like birthday cake. If you're having it all the time every day, when you really need it to signify something important, you're like, had this yesterday for lunch. <laughs> so the examples I picked out here on effective cursing, Tom Brady, about to win another Super Bowl, needs to fire his team up and the stadium up, runs down, boom, drop one. Great. David Ortiz, public curse, one of the most famous public curses. I'll stay in New England. After there was a terrorist attack in Boston Marathon, David Ortiz went up and said, this is our yeah. city. Right. It works. It's effective. It is. I've read a thousand Woj tweets, maybe 10,000. I've only read, seen him curse once. It's to dress down a grandstanding senator privately. Yeah. But that works because he saves it. And then he uses it as an F bomb. <laughs> it's not supposed to be an F <laughs> snowball. Yeah. Yeah. So using it just like flippantly, you either are trying to really make a statement and then you're going to have no ammo left when Denver blows you out by 30 points in the first week of the season. Or... You're, you're, you are using it so flippantly that you're not giving the, the moment 
Uh, are you treating it as seriousness? It as feels like he may deserves. have thought it was going to hit like oh, that. Yeah, oh, yeah. He, thought, he thought he it thought was going to hit. That much. But I, I, so here is my takeaway is actually not on the cursing. Oh. I don't think that's the important thing. I think the important thing, and it was so perfect, because Brew didn't know I was going to say this, and then he said, oh, JJ used an odd term. We were talking about yeah. this earlier. Engagement farming. Brew, that's only an odd term to you because you don't live online. Folks, Doesn't even who, follow me. folks who live online, <laughs> they're very familiar with what JJ's talking about. And forget the doth protest too much part of the guy who went on first take and called Bob Cousy playing against plumbers and firemen. And then the late great Jerry West reminded everyone, hey, your stats are online too, buddy. <laughs> um, he, you know who talks about engagement farming? The online world and the people who live online. And yes, there's a lack of self-awareness there, but that's a separate issue. The biggest issue is this. J.J. Reddick, in my opinion, did that press conference to impress Twitter. Oh, that's a good take. You know, Twitter likes, man, bleep the man. That's we can right. curse wherever we want. Engagement farming. You all suck. That's fine. I'm telling you right now, if you coach the Lakers to impress Twitter, you will not succeed. Do you know what he said before uh, you about work? No. Because no one started about it. I've certainly heard everything. I've certainly heard everything. Oh, I, and he hasn't really heard it. He's read it and clicked right. it. Yeah. And it. So that, to me, he does is the bigger concern. I don't no care. Doubt. I don't give an F how much he curses. I do care if he's will be roaming. He's a defensive player of the year, but he went back last year because he had to play out of position. Have Zach Eadie back there as the, as the anchor on defense, blocking shots. And then an offense with John Dreyser Lane just hands it off Zach Eadie and Zach Eadie dunks it. No. Stop. He's going to be good. Dusty, we're back, buddy. I still right. think you wear high vis, though. It's just, I, I, I don't think it's a bad pick. They, they, they're going to be good. You know, they've got shooting with Bain and, and like you said, Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. Ja will come back with a vengeance. I think this is a, he can have some value. I don't even know if he'll start, but he'll have can some value for question? certain situations. I have one final situations. thing. Yeah, go, go quick. Bro, you know what you like? You always say when things get rough in the playoffs, yep. what yep. do you like big guys to do? Bang. The, right. Well, start rolling. Right, right, Back right. him down. Yourself. That's all Zach Eady's got. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to be clear, I, yeah, that voice you were doing of mocking the Zach Eady skeptics, yeah. were you doing it of yourself two months ago? Because <laughs> you said you just now came around and then you mocked all the points you made. I know. Okay. All right. That's you fine. As long him. as we're on the record. I didn't rip him, I, but, but you didn't think Dusty and I were having some rough times. I was more of a clinging guy. Dusty, we're back, buddy. Uh, JJ Reddick with some colorful language. Wow. We've got a new report that maybe could join the Warriors who would dangle a max contract in front of him, bring him to Northern California. Here's Paul George stats this year. Career highs in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, and free throws, 91%, pretty good. And podcast, honestly, not bad. Agreed. Not That's bad. Solidly bad. not bad if you're currently in the NBA yeah. is a high bar. <laughs> uh, your reaction to Paul George to the Warriors. Brew, I totally support this for the Warriors. Not because I think it necessarily makes them championship contenders even, but because I just believe if you have one of the greatest players ever and he is still performing at an elite level, yep. even if it's not his apex, you owe it to him. To always be all in. Mm -hmm. That's how I've always felt about LeBron every step of the way. I like and that. I feel the same way about Steph. As long as Steph is still an all-NBA level guy, you should constantly be going for it. You owe it to him. Yep. And Steph in particular because he has been the consummate Team guy who set aside his own numbers and shoe deal to bring in Durant has always done everything right. Has been the team's damn chaplain, essentially dealing with the Draymond stuff, and he wants to win. And so I think you would have a better chance, even if I still would probably be like, yeah, you're probably gonna lose in round one. But better chance. It's I don't care about Joe Lacob paying a luxury tax bill. No. It's not my problem. So.